Good evening, everyone. Uh, as you know, tonight um, you're about to vote on um, our budget for 2017-18. And I just want to do a, a once-over, not only of the budget, just of everything that's on the ballot on March on May 16th. Um, again, just quickly, the 2017-18 budget, as, as I stated, uh, the use of the capital reserve funds for the Mahar School Building, the transportation limits for students. Again, that's the reduction of transportation uh, distances for our K through six students, 2.5 miles from 1.5 miles. And the, the three seats for the Board of Education, which will also be on the ballot that are up this year. We'll start with our budget. Last time we were here, we did not have a past New York State budget, but now we do. Uh, as we all know, we received approximately $900,000 more in aid. But for those of you who remember our conversation last time, we had about a $1.7 million gap. So that $900,000 did not close the gap. We have, uh, for the purpose of this, this budget, to balance the budget for this year, stay at the tax levy limit and not eliminate any programs or personnel. We have decided to uh, propose to the board to allocate fund balance to fill that $600,000 or, or so gap that we had remaining, leaving us with our budget at a zero where it needs to be and remaining at the 1.35% um, on our tax levy limit. Again, talking about this budget, this wasn't an exciting budget year, obviously. Last year we had a little more excitement, the year before we had a little more excitement when we had some extra money with the capital elimination adjustment coming back to us and we talked about what we were doing with that money. One of the things I think we can point to here that is exciting about this budget <laughs> is we're able to maintain all of those initiatives that we put in place over the last few years. We're not pulling away from the commitments that we've made. Maintain, and again, when we think about our forums that we had very early in this year, very early the year before, the things that people valued most, our AP classes, our athletics, our music, our library, art, extracurriculars, those are things that we are able to continue to maintain, our music program, art program, you know, our extracurriculars and our advanced placements. Those are, there's, there's no touching, we're not touching any of those. We're able to continue moving forward, uh, offering <laughs> the vast array of things for students in those areas that we already do. The board's goal of keeping our K-1-2s at 22 or fewer remains in place, and we can keep that in place with this budget, so our appropriate class size in that K-1-2 will stay in place. Our support for our special education uh, classes, looking at the least restrictive environment and, uh, and our co-teaching model, we're able to, again, to continue on moving forward with that program. Um, continue our SEL support through social workers and psychologists. If you recall, so we've added social workers and psychologists at just about every level, including you know, the high and middle schools. Um, we're able to continue that. Okay, when, we, when, we're, when we're looking to cut things, we all know what are the things we cut. We cut away from the classroom as far as possible. These are things that we would be cutting that we, we are able to continue to maintain. Um, and again, keeping our instructional coaches, getting our, we've heard actually a couple of times tonight about the instructional coaches and, and their help in the classroom. So we're able to continue to support to our teachers with the instructional coaches in the classroom. So not an exciting budget, not a lot here for us to talk about in our additions, but I think it's really encouraging that we are able to maintain the things that we've talked about, maintain the things that we've identified as important over the last few years. And, and I've said it several times, I think one of the things is really staying the course with the things that we felt strongly about in the past. Proposition two, the use of the capital reserve for Mahar for a pre-kindergarten center. Again, this is uh, the talk about moving into Mahar, uh, addressing our need for more opportunities for our four-year-olds in Kingston City School District, specifically looking at our English as a second language students and our students who would receive free and reduced lunch and live in poverty who are typically not, who are being served by our, um, by our community partners, we want to grab them. We are not looking to take uh, anything away from our community partners. In fact, our UPK grant, which comes from the state, is totally separate from this program. That grant money will continue to flow into our, uh, the programs that are run by our community partners. So they are not looking to, to, to do that. We really want to benefit the entire community. Our, our goal, our hope, is that every four-year-old who lives in the Kingston City School District will be able to go to a pre quali high-quality pre-kindergarten program. And we know what that does for, for students as far as getting a leg up and then keeping it up for those four years, or for those four years, for those 13 years that they're with us. Um, again, part of this is the $4.3 million budget, which again can be accomplished with zero tax impact on our local taxpayers. And I'll talk about that a little more in a few minutes. <coughs> I want to talk about the use of capital reserve. That's one of the things that you know, is out there that we're talking about. People aren't really necessarily understanding what the capital reserve is and the capital reserve is. A reserve
reserve put aside by the Board of Education through our budget and through maybe unexpected revenues on occasion for us and, again, the voters vote for it, that we can keep in place how much we can put in there, hence the voting to take it out of there, that we can only use for capital improvements. So it can't be used to put into a regular contingent budget, it can't be used for any other expenses, can't use it for tax or share, you know, anything like that. We can only use it for capital reserves. And we have a history of doing this over the last, well, at least the last five and a half years of using our capital reserve to make improvements in our school buildings and continue to, and a few years ago we called it, you know, our rejuvenation program, and that's one of the things, just to recap, the way we've used that money. Since 2013, we've been putting that money into our buildings. And again, you know, one of the issues with this is the way we're spending this money, it's not exciting. It's not new gyms, it's not cafeterias, it's not big screen TVs in classrooms, it's not any of those things. It's really the bricks and mortar and the things we really needed in our buildings at those times. You see, you're going to see in this list a lot of things like roofs, heaters, boilers, boiler rooms, electric panels. Those are the things that we, you know, we can put new gyms in all day long, but if we don't have roofs over those gyms that are not in disrepair, we're going to have a lot of problems maintaining that gym floor. So roofs and those kind of things were things we were looking at. One other thing you'll also see in here is ADA compliance. You know, early when I came here, we had a lot of look at where we were with ADA compliance, and we weren't in a good place. So you'll see that through here. Again, 2013, Kennedy, roof replacement. Edson, roof replacement. Miller, roof replacement. Think about the size of Miller. That's a lot of roof. J. Watson Bailey, fire alarm replacement. Again, we talked, Mr. Clapper talked about fire alarm a minute ago that we were having some issues with. We don't want our buildings without fire alarms. Boiler at John F. Kennedy as well. New heating, you know, new heating system. 2014, Kingston High School, main roof replacement. Meyer Elementary, abatement and removal of VAT flooring in the gymnasium. So we had to get rid of that vinyl asbestos tile. Another thing we see here a lot. When these buildings were built, you know, asbestos was what people used. We need to get it out. And we can't touch things. If we touch something with asbestos, we have to abate it, usually doubling the cost of whatever that project is. Miller Middle School, looking at the bus, looking at the pavement work. Miller Middle School, asbestos abatement and ceiling, which also is all new ceiling and all new lighting in Miller Middle School. So you have a roof, new ceiling, new lighting, getting rid of the abatement. You all remember that was a couple summers ago when Miller was off limits. No one could go into that building for the entire school year. We kind of came right up to the first day of school without a lot of that work. Edson Elementary School had the handicap re-up again. No access for handicapped students at Edson. We were able to make that happen. J. Watson Bailey Middle School, removal of the wood floor in the shop classroom. Again, that was creating problems. It was bubbled. It was dangerous. We had to remove that. Chambers Elementary School, new sidewalks and landscaping there. Again, ADA compliance issues. Cracks in the sidewalk. Actually, if you remember the old sidewalk down the side of the chambers, it really wasn't a sidewalk. It was asphalt thrown over the grass. 2015, Meyer School boiler room. Kindergarten emergency lighting, electrical upgrades. Again, health and safety issues that need to be taken care of right away. George Washington heating system, emergency lighting, electrical upgrades, ADA bathrooms. One of the things you see looking at the ADA. Chambers School, ADA bathrooms. Reconfiguring the medical office to make sure that we were ADA compliant. Lighting, electrical upgrades, and fan wall replacement, making sure that we were getting the air exchanges we needed in the school building. Middle School, again, boiler. Miller Middle School, boiler, circulation pumps, gymnasium, heating, and ventilation. So you think about Miller. Miller has new roof, new heating, new electricity. Those are the things that we really had to take care of in that first round. Resurfacing the blacktop this year. These are things we'll be doing this summer. Resurfacing the blacktop at Crosby, George Washington, and Meyer. Resurfacing the gymnasiums and floors at Edson and JFK. I heard a cheer for that right here. I changed my mind. We're not doing that. Stage curtains at Edson and Bailey Middle School. Replacing the light systems at J. Watson Bailey Middle School. So we're really, you know, we've been doing a lot with those programs and those and that capital reserve over the last few years. So we're pleased to see that we've done that. Going backwards, continuing, but looking at our fiscal responsibility as a board of education and proposals by the school administration. Tax levy since its inception here, or I'm sorry, I shouldn't say since I've been here. In 2012 to 2013, our tax levy 
We could have gone to 3.38. You know what I say about the tax levy all the time. It's not a tax cap, and it's not 2%. It's a tax levy limit. It's a complicated calculation that is different for every school, every year, and it's almost never to. And then you look here, my logic holds true because it's never to. 2012, 2013, 3.38 was our tax cap. The board adopted a budget that was 2.49. 2013-14, tax cap, 4%. Board adopted a tax levy change that was 2.5. 14-15, tax cap was 1.51, very low tax cap. We stayed at that tax cap. 2015-16, almost in half, 2.52. The board adopted 1.25. 2016-17, 1.98 was what we adopted. 3.37 is where we could go to. So as far as being conservative and fiscally responsible, looking at our budgets, this board has stayed significantly below the tax levy tax cap over the last five years and will continue to do so this year, staying at the tax levy limit. So what's the advantage of that? Well, the advantage of that, obviously, is it shows that being conservative and fiscally responsible to our taxpayers. But on top of that, we also, it allows, in these years, it allows our taxpayers to participate in the tax freeze that was in place. That has changed. Now it's a tax rebate. It's not as, you know, it's a different qualification. But it's still, if we went over that tax levy limit, our taxpayers would not qualify for those benefits of receiving either rebates or refunds from the state for their tax increases. Once again, going back to talk about Mahar a little bit, we look at the movie versus staying. Why not stay here? The advantages of moving to Mahar, what are they? The advantages of moving to Mahar, obviously, we talk about having the pre-K center, the classrooms are there, we're ready to go. We can put a few renovations in there and we can do the classrooms. We know that if we leave this building, a conversation we'll have in a little while, we leave this building, there is a value to this building. This value, the value of this building is growing as we sit here, as the minutes tick by, as we sit here. So we are, we know that there's going to be income coming to this building for the district to offset some of the expenses from Mahar. This building, if purchased, will be put on the tax rolls, which is a benefit to the city, to the county, to our taxpayers, and to the school district. So we look at the moving versus staying. We also, in moving, we go to a school building that does not have the value that this is. It does not have the resale value or the development value that this building has. We move into that building. So we have a vacant school building that is filled with students and with administrators and support teams. And we have opportunity for us to really participate in an economic, the economic boom that's going on here in Uptown Kingston. So I think that the, looking at where we are, we're figuring it's going to take, we're not figuring, it's going to take $4.3 million in renovations for Mahar. We assume we're going to have about $1 million from Crown Street, and I think that's a low estimate at this point, which would mean we'll have $3.3 million that it will cost us to move. Right now, we currently have about $3 million worth of repairs that have to be done in the next five years in this building. So that's new roofs, new boilers, things that we need to do here, about $3 million. So we could stay here, spend $3 million, and not achieve any of the advantages that we talked about in Mahar. Or we can move to Mahar and for $3.3 million, achieve all the things that we said we were going to. This $3.3 million also does not include what we'll receive back in aid from the State Education Department, which we're working with that, out with them right now, and I will have numbers of that within a week or so. So we see the advantages of moving far outweigh the advantages of staying, not only for the Kingston State School District, but for the entire community. Lastly on the ballot, again, there are three open seats in the Board of Education. Each of those seats will be a three-year term, and candidates' petitions are due to the clerk of the board, which is Mr. Perna here, by April 26th, end of business day. And then more information will be posted at that time when we know who those candidates are on the 26th. But important to know, each of those candidates will be invited to participate in the Meet the Candidates Night, which will be May 9th at 6.30 at Kingston High School, and it will be sponsored by the parent group and moderated by the League of Women Voters. Other dates to know, coming up tomorrow, tomorrow morning at 8.30, the Board of Education, there will be a coffee and conversation at 288 Wall Street for anything that people want to talk about. April 26th, budget forum here, 6 p.m. We will also be doing a Facebook Live at that point. I have no idea what that means, but Mrs. Heidegger does. So she's doing a Facebook Live. 
May 1st will be the budget presentation uh, over at the Senior Center at Chambers. Uh, May 3rd is our budget hearing, 5.30, near Crown Street. May 9th, meet the candidates we talk, candidates name we talk about, and most important date, May 16th, come out and vote on the school district budget. So before we go back to <coughs> the resolution on the uh, budget, are there any questions? Mrs. Jordan? It's not really a question as much as a comment um, regarding the use of capital funds for all of those lists of uh, repairs that you talked about. I know that in terms of the facilities committee for many, many years, um, I remember prior to that, we went through a period of time in this district where everything was in disrepair. And it was horrifying. Nobody paid a penny for maintenance. And I think in the long run, it cost us far more to try to get back to function. And so I think that the process that this board has supported and the administration has, you know, implemented, along with Mr. Clapper and his mighty crew, um, have just made a tremendous difference. And it, it might not be showy and, as you said, you know, exciting, but it has a tremendous impact on the function of these buildings and the comfort of the kids and the, the faculty and staff that have to work in those buildings. And so I really think that that's wonderfully wise use of these capital funds. And I think that it, you're all to be congratulated. I mean, I'm new to this, but I think that it's been very, very helpful in keeping a standard in our buildings. I think if you go back, if you watch videos from four years, four years, four or five years ago, the, we, um, when we, for first five year uh, facilities plan came out, we, I called it our renovation and rejuvenation program, and we took that money and we were able to get the, the community to allow us to spend that money on it. And I think now we have the new five year plan in hand. Right. We see what we've done, and we have the new five year plan. And now the board has actually directed me a couple of months ago to come back with a plan this spring of how we're going to achieve that, and then we're in the process of developing that plan. It will, be, it will be presented to the board later this spring. But the community needs to understand, when we started these tours years ago, there were lists and lists and lists of things. Now when you go on the tours with the principals, they're delighted to say, you know, there's still places where there's lots to do, but many of the buildings that have had the attention don't have that much to do. Yeah, I think the visitation committee that and the work that they've done, at least in the time of here, has been um, amazing to me and even after the mandate for the visitation committee was taken away <laughs> we didn't have to do it anymore we're still doing it so I appreciate and I know that um, you know uh, our, our construction team and, and our architectural team participate in that as well and, and the notes are all up on our, our um, website of, of all of those things so it's a it's a it's a great practice and it gives us you know, a, an idea of what we need to do and and also it does highlight the things that Tom and his team do which are you know those are things that we've done that through capital project that's right. not talking about the things that Tom and his team do on their own every day so I, have, I have two questions one kind of just to follow up on what Mrs. Jordan just said um, even when we take this money or if we're able to take the funding out for the Mahar project there will still be a substantial amount of funding left in that capital about project. six million dollars okay which is more than that given state aid yes so that we half again as much as we discussed last time. <laughs> People can do the math on that, 60% as much. Um, so that we can continue to do this work in our school buildings because we still need some, right. and we still need to pay attention as we go forward so we don't end up back where we were. So I think that. And if you remember the facilities, um, the facilities plan that was presented, Mr. Hilgey actually presented it a few months ago. I mean, we have a five-year priority list. We look at that yeah. first year priorities, and we, you know, we start knocking those off and see where we go. Um, so that's that's how that's how my plan to the board in the spring will will be shown. And for the for the budget, I, I'm happy um, not to have an exciting budget. It means we also don't have a devastating budget. So this is okay. But can you speak a little bit to what it does to our fis our fiscal health to use fund balance to fill in that gap? Well, I think you know we're. We're in a good position as far as that is, is concerned. I mean, we, we have the fund balance. We have, and we project that we'll have some, some um, unexpensed, unexpended appropriations this year that will offset that. So we're not, I mean, it's not, this isn't um, using fund balance. If you also remember, I keep going back to the past. If you remember uh, five, four years ago, we used $2.6 million, and we slowly you know, moved it 
down. So I think, and we are actually in better shape. If you look at our audit and our reserves, you look at our better shape as far as our reserves are, and better shape as far as our fund balances. We're confident that using that using that money will not necessarily, you know, it's gonna, isn't going to put us in any situation that is that we're worried about. We and we are still, you know, in conversation with our teachers uh, about what we may be able to do around health insurance that could impact, you know, um, you know, revenues moving forward. Okay, so that's not really going to impact our fiscal health. No, no, and we still and we still continue to do our three-year plans. You know, we know what our expenditures look like. Again, we have those wild cards because we don't know what our what our revenues are going to look like coming out of the state, and we're that's one of the reasons we continue to ask for the foundation aid to be run so we have some predictability here. Um, but no, I wouldn't say we're in any kind of crisis. <coughs> Again, not a question, but I think that it's, it's important for us to really get a grasp of what's happened in this uh, district over the last five, six years. When I first came on the board, we would go to visit the facilities, and when we would go, they would hand us a list. All they did is change the date and put the next year on because <laughs> nothing had been done. And that was what's going on. Most people felt they're going to come again and walk through the building nothing will be done nothing's going to happen and then the last five or six years they watch what's happened and when you go in the building now it's, it's so encouraging because it's not only are the people that are working there encouraged that their building is looking good and they can come and say well you've got this little thing but it's interesting as you walk through now before there was a whole list of stuff and now you walk through and there's there's so much that has been done that they're they're appreciative of that the kids realize it, you know, when they go into the gym or wherever it is. So a lot has been done. I think that this board uh, uh, should feel proud about the fact of what has happened and what administration has done. And again, it's not like we're stopping. We still will be doing great work. There's a lot of good things that's going to be happening over the next five years. And uh, we've been fiscally, fiscally responsible so that we have these funds that enable us to be able to continue this type of work. And I, I don't want to leave out the fact that, that, and also a few years back, we invested significantly in finally hiring a head of buildings and grounds instead of what we had before, which was no head of buildings and grounds, and Mr. Clapper and his, his team. A lot of what's going on is because we've done that in Mr. Clapper's work and having someone at the helm watching things. But this is, um, but just in, in, I guess, in conclusion, um, I think this is a good budget. I think this achieves what I always talk about we want to achieve, which is, you know, balancing the needs of our students with our community and their ability, their community's values and their ability to pay. Uh, we st we're staying at that tax levy limit, and we're keeping our programs and our personnel. I mean, those are those, you know, those are real accomplishments, I think, looking at, looking at the type of budget year that we've had um, and uh, the adjustments that, that had been made over, the, over uh, a lot of other places. So I think that this is a strong budget. I think that looking at our transportation um, referendum, I think that is a, that's a reasonable thing for us to be looking at, uh, to, to lower that rate. I know that there's still talk about students riding their bikes to school and walking to school and how that is healthy, and yes, it is, and we still encourage that, but we want to have the opportunities to keep, you know, have that, um, reduce that, that distance. Looking at Mahar, I, I, I see it, I, I can't see it as anything, as I've said a million times, a win, win, win. It's a win in the area for our pre-K students that we really want to reach out to them. And when we look at, we see the success that we're having academically across the district. We see our graduation rate. We see going from having eight schools on the focus list, having four schools on the focus, on the focus list. We see our subgroups graduating more. But we have to look and find out what are those next things that we need to do to keep that momentum. And one of the things we know, we know is about grabbing those four-year-olds and making sure that they get the head, you know, getting that leg up that they need. So getting our hands around four-year-olds in the Kansas City School District is an important thing for us. So it's a win in that area. It's a win in being able to re, you know, refill Mahar, which is a building that we closed four years ago. And it's a win for our community for selling this building, putting it back on the tax rolls, and let it be part of the economic development that's going on here in Kingston, uh, in uptown Kingston. Um, so that's, that's what we're doing on May 16th. And Ms. Guido has another question. Well, more like a question comment. <laughs> a question I get asked a lot is, well, what happens if you can't pull off the pre-K? And I think it's important for taxpayers to know that we're building classroom space. So those classrooms could be used for a variety of purposes mm -hmm. in the future. But if, if we build them now, if we don't build them. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you know, so there's many different, and you know, we've, we talk, when we, when we put in the plan to, to build the high school, one of the things we talk about, we're, we're moving to an academy model or a cohort model, but we don't want to be tied into any one philosophy at any given time. Uh, this doesn't tie us into any one philosophy. 
And, and the other side of it is, I think there's also the belief that we're going to hire six teachers and 12 teachers assistants and then try to fill the rooms. That's not how we'll do it. We'll fill the rooms and then we'll hire the teachers and the teacher assistants that, that will go with the number of students that we have. It, you know, it's going to be a, um, a public relations re a, you know, outreach, a real, commu you know, real community outreach and communications um, plan for us to make sure we get parents to know about this new pre-K program when it's, when it's put in place so we can fill those classrooms. But that's, that's all part of that program and um, you know, we'll, we'll come. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Shaw, I think. Uh, well, the comment that I, when, when you showed the slide of the tax levy, the historical tax levy uh, compared to the limit, uh, and I really think back to the first year that you were our superintendent, and your, your first task was what to do about Mahar, where, where, where are Mahar students going to go to? And, and then, uh, by the end of eight months, the board had voted to close three more elementary schools. And I really strongly believe that the um, financial situation that we are in, uh, we're not in a stressed financial situation. And that's a direct result of those closures. And, uh, and I thank the board that did it. But also the community that allowed us to do that without a lot of, uh, I mean, it was contentious, uh, but the community went along with it, and we're now at the end of the fourth year, I believe, of uh, the reconfigured school. Uh, and uh, and I, I think that the Mahar project <coughs> is another capstone in that whole process that I hope the community supports us in uh, allowing to go forward. Mr. Michael. Would you put up again the, uh, for the Mahar School project? Just want to make a comment about the uh, this for sale of young Mahar. Here. Okay, uh, I remember a couple of years ago we were talking about selling Sioni for like uh, 200 or 600,000. The other one was about 650,000. It's been like three years now, and evidently the market has changed so much recently. And by looking at the real estate market today, I can say positively the price of Sioni did become more as high as $2 million. And that's very encouraging. And you never know by the time we'll more to say yes. As you said, the price keeps going on and on. So we don't know what we're going to get from Sony, but definitely we'll be in excess of the million dollars from there. So we might be coming ahead of the game after the sale of Sion. Well, that's what I want to say. <laughs>